just in time for the spookiest of seasons, we have the oddly named Jesus Kyofu no Bio Monster. Hailing from the RPG powerhouse Enix, Jesus Kyofu no Bio Monster was originally released on the PC-88 and MSX2 in 1987, before receiving a port for the Famicom in 1989, which is the version we'll be focusing on. Heavily inspired by sci-fi classics of the era, this little-known point-and-click adventure is one of the select few horror titles for the NES, and is perfect for your yearly dose of retro spooks. Set adrift in the endless void of space, the seven-man crew of the spaceship Jesus are en route to touch down on Halley's Comet to harvest for gas. What seems like a simple task quickly becomes a nightmare as an unknown lifeform has found itself amongst the samples and now the ship. Who will live and who will die? Taking control of Japanese crew member Hayao, it is up to you to stay frosty and fight off the horrifying creature. However, you're not alone as you'll have your trusty crew to help out. There's the pretty scientist and musician Aline, who is our MC's love interest. Damn, all our friends are dead. Guess we should bone about it. There's the gluttonous game-loving Balkes, the intelligent xenobiologist Roger Carson, whose name is a nice reference to legendary B-movie director Roger Corman. A quick aside, if you want some classic cheese to watch for Halloween, Corman's back catalog is a goldmine of B-movie trash. We also have the gorgeous Dr. Hoka, Commander Ali, Captains Hewler and Milikov, who look like they're right out of a Gundam or Macross anime. There's the brave computer specialist Bellini, and I can't forget Aline's cute and handy robot pet, Foji. With this being a point-and-click adventure, you'll find yourself in a pretty typical situation for the genre. You'll be stalking the halls of each vessel, investigating, and searching rooms for clues as to what has happened, what may be aboard the ship, and how to defeat it. You'll also want to keep an eye out for survivors, as when comms were cut between the crew's two ships, there's no telling who made it. But don't keep your back turned for too long or else you might get cornered by the deadly stowaway. The graphics depicting the lonely and harrowing innards of these ships are stunning. They radiate the cold and unnerving oppression of space effectively, as many backdrops look as if they could be right from Alien. However, I do wish we were treated to a few more scenes or camera angles throughout the game, as it does feel a little too static at times, but maybe that's just me. With that in mind, it should be said that this is not a game for everyone. If you're hoping for a fast-paced, action-packed adventure like Snatcher, then you might want to look elsewhere. As this game maintains a slower, more methodical pace that lends itself to the atmosphere it creates. So while Jesus may have its high-stakes moments, do prepare to hunker down for a story-driven adventure with less focus on the more creative interactions found in Kemco's offerings. Not to mention that it falls victim to the usual trappings of the genre, with its reliance on a precise order of operations and choices needed to further the story. So by all means, I'd recommend having a game fact on standby, or if you're against that, then be sure to press all options multiple times even when it seems like you've run out of luck. The game's eerie OST was composed by the legendary Koichi Sugiyama, who is responsible for the timeless soundtracks of the first few Dragon Quest games. His work here is more stripped back than usual, as many songs are used as ambience or mechanical chit-chat rather than actual music, although there are a few strong and lighthearted themes that pop up from time to time, one of which plays an integral part in the plot, as I did mention that Aline is a musician. With its well-written and captivating story, ominous yet beautiful graphics and score, and terrifying shape-shifting antagonist, Jesus Kyofu no Bio Monster truly feels like it belongs in the famous Kemco trilogy alongside Deja Vu, Shadowgate, and Uninvited, despite the fact that it's not quite as polished in my opinion. So if you're a fan of those games, then this one comes highly recommended, as it's a decent playthrough and one that I revisit every few years. But if neither sci-fi nor point-and-click adventures are your thing, then I can't see this game changing your mind. If you're looking to retrieve this specimen for your own collection, an original Japanese copy seems to sit around $15 to $70 for a loose or boxed copy respectively, with fan-translated carts sitting right in the middle around $40. However, the ROM is readily available online for you to enjoy. 
So if a terrifying trip to space where no one can hear your 8-bit screams sounds like a spooktacular time to you, then look no further than Jesus Kofu no Biomonster. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this episode, consider checking out these other videos right here, or even subscribing. Also, if you'd like to throw me a couple of bucks, you can support the show on Patreon.